that this time it's not going to be about trains or engineering stuff. It's just going to be about my new telescope, the Meet ETX 125. Now, for those of you who already have it or thinking about getting it, uh, there's something that caught my attention, which is the Meet ETX 80, the smaller version. What I like about that telescope is the uh, mobility with the backpack. And uh, I've seen a couple of people coming up with suitcase designs for the Meet ETX 125, but uh, that really, really didn't quite cut it for me. So I came up with something on my own with a backpack, and uh, I want to show you something. So take a look at this. that was a little fast so uh, let me just walk you through all the uh, contents that this uh, uh, backpack carries and walk you through it so let's uh, do that one more time what do we have here the uh, red dot finder the stabilizer the uh, tripod mr. do cap which we can just slide on backwards like that and this is it I mean I wasn't looking for this but I just found it and uh, it just served the, my purposes for this telescope perfectly the uh, trekking backpack Outlander extreme 80 liter that's uh, what you gotta be looking for at eBay you can get it for 45 euros but the first thing you gotta, gotta do once you get it is to cushion this baby up this disgusting looking uh, little piece of upholstery it was made by my wife but uh, she really did a, an excellent job on it it has a sturdy lower part and a soft upper part that way once you uh, put the telescope in it's cushioned up from the lower side which is very important and it has an ex uh, an access compartment at the lower part of uh, the, the backpack which you can see here and the main compartment has to be cushioned up by this 2.5 centimeters or one inch thick upholstery fabric which uh, is measured uh, 50 centimeters in width and 80 centimeters in length I have no idea what it's in <laughs> Imperial system so just look that up so roll this puppy up that's sometimes the annoying part getting all this stuff inside there but uh, using modern editing techniques I can speed this up a little and there you go. Now this length and this width is just perfect on making the most use of the inside of this backpack which you can see here and once you get the ends touching each other like that that's the way you want it. That little tunnel all the way down to the cushion. Perfect. Now let's get Mr. Telescope. First we have to put a little bit of uh, plastic wrap around it because uh, if you just squeeze the telescope in without this, uh, this plastic, it's just going to get stuck. And that's really, really annoying. And in order not to, uh, in order to stop the you know, plastic bag from rolling up, I use these little Velcro stops or um, <laughs> connectors. And so it's all wrapped up. And now you can just easily look at that. One finger. Ah, uh, just use gravity in order to get it in there. Perfect. And yeah, it's cushioned from the top, it's cushioned from the side, and from the from the upper part there's nothing happening. So twiddle it all together. And that's it for the main compartment. Now the front compartment down here is a detachable separate backpack. And that's where I keep all the night vision stuff because you can just detach it during the day if you're just gonna watch wildlife. You don't need the red dot finder, you don't need the computer, and you also don't need the stabilizer. So just keep that separate and be able to detach any time once you go out to see wildlife. And here's really the absolute beauty part about this thing. How do you get the tripod attached? Now it has these wonderful little side clips, these side straps. 
two on each side. I have no idea what they're supposed to be used for, but uh, in order to strap down the tripod, ideal, let me tell you, ideal. And perfect length, the per perfect uh, tension on it. There you go. And that's it. You can also put a little harness there on the back part because sometimes it's sticking out if you're not careful and especially if you're inside you tend to tip things over then <clears throat> pull the hood on top of it there's another case on the, on the top part where i keep a raincoat for daytime spotting and also a made from scratch iphone adapter yeah so just strap that all up as well and there you go everything I mean, everything you need right there. Got a little flashlight there on the shoulder strap. Perfect. Okay, enough with the preparation. Daytime vision. What can you expect from this telescope during the day? So, I went up to a bird sanctuary in northern Germany and took position at a uh, viewing station right here. And uh, I have two observations that I want to show you at 500 and 900 meters distance. The uh, first thing that I want to show you is the uh, 500 meter distance, which with a uh, 32 millimeter eyepiece would gives you 60 times magnification, and here is 900 meters distance. So as you can see, even a kilometer's distance, you still get an eagle eye view of everything that's going on. That was just practice. So let's go up to the sea. We went up to northern Germany to Hallikrog, which is a peninsula close to the uh, Wattenmeer. Wattenmeer with the spectacular low tide and high tide areas and uh, we set up the telescope here by the shore and as you can see there was just a blank horizon nothing to see there but right here way out in the distance with the 13 millimeter eyepiece which gives you 150 times magnification we saw this I mean how cool is that we weren't even looking for it and people were asking what are you looking at so if you take a look at this, you could see seals taking advantage of the uh, low tide, resting out on sandbanks until the high tide came in. There were actually many more, but this was the best shot that we got because it was the closest one. And yeah, I mean, just taking the telescope up for, to see something like this is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Three kilometers distance, and if it weren't for the wind and the poor quality of the camera, you'd really see something else.